For some perspective, that's a Caterpillar D10. Well, one of the top machines we're asked about is the drag line. Now, there aren't very many drag lines in the United States or even around the world, but we're with North American Coal today, just north of Beulah at the Freedom Mine. And we're gonna go onto this enormous earth mover, check it out and show you all how they work. Hey MTV, welcome to my drag line. Come on in. So here we are in the entryway. Uh, this is where a lot of the magic happens. <clears throat> here we have the refrigerator, freezer, water cooler, coffee and camera station. <clears throat> Cabinets, lots of storage. Computer for business only. microwave and that's where we operate like back hoist up uh, head hoist down yeah left swing left right swing right Ahead is drag out. Okay. Back is drag in. And left, right on this one doesn't do anything. And all these buttons is like channel one radio or ground channel radio, step up, step down, yeah. horn on, wipers. I see. All the other little stuff. Do you all typically run it from the right cab? We do on this machine because we dig our pit from that end to this end. Okay. And then when we get down on that end, we walk back to that end. Oh, really? So how many people does it take to operate a big drag line like this? Well, the crew is three individuals. One person is on the ground driving the tractor, watching the power cable, making sure everything around the drag line is nice and safe. The second person is the oiler. They're taking care of the, the mechanical side of the machine. It basically takes constant maintenance to keep this thing running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then of course we have the operator. The operator is in the cab. On this machine, because of the way they're digging, they're in the right cab, but the machine also has an identical left cab. It depends how the machine is situated in the mine, but typically they're running this one from that right cab. All three people on the dragline crew can technically operate the dragline so they can switch out as needed if anybody needs brakes, but that's how the crew is structured. The dragline is a Bucyrus Erie 2350. This mine has three of them. This specific unit here has been here since the 80s, mining for over 40 years. The machine in a 12 hour shift typically moves 60, 70,000 cubic yards of material. Its record is almost 90,000 cubic yards for one 12 hour shift. It runs on two 12 hour shifts. So two shifts per day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This is the business end of the drag line. They're about to start working on these, these teeth right here, but before they do, we just wanted to walk you through it. It can move over 100 yards of material at a time. It can carry about 215 tons of material per pass. They have multiple buckets on site. There's a lot of upkeep for these buckets. The teeth, for example, 
last uh, on average about three weeks before they have to change them out. And then they rotate these buckets out periodically through the year to rebuild them, reskin them. But these buckets over the years have moved millions and millions and tens of millions of yards of material. Billions and billions and chains for scale. Can't buy these at Home Depot. The drag line digs with four cables. These two cables here are the bigger cables. These are the drag cables. They go right into the house behind me. They're attached to the front of the bucket and they pull the bucket in and let the bucket out. These do mostly the digging. And then these right here are the hoist cables. They're a little bit smaller, much longer though. They're attached to the boom and then they're fed into the house from there. These hoist the bucket up and down. So all the cables do, the four cables, pull the bucket in and out, lift the bucket up and down, and then the machine itself swings the bucket back and forth. This right here is how the entire drag line gets its power. It is not diesel, it's not fuel, it's electric. This machine is mining coal to feed a power plant. The power plant produces electricity, so they take the electricity, they route it back to the machines, feeding the plants to begin with. This cable right here is what's moved around by the ground man. You saw with the tractor, he was able to move that power cable, manage this cable. As the machine gets further away, they add more cable, which is what they're doing right now. That's why the machine's dead. And then as the machine goes back towards where this cable comes from, they remove pieces of cable. These come in about a thousand foot increments. So all it is really is just in a giant extension cord. All right, now let's go check out inside the drag line. Yeah, yeah, but just kind of like walking around. Yeah. How many horsepower are they roughly? Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. So here, this is the hoist drum. Okay. We're in between the drums right now. This is the hoist drum. The cables go out along the boom. And then this is the drag drum. These cables go out essentially parallel to the ground to the front part of the bucket to pull the bucket in and let the bucket out. For uh, just some, some scale, the house of the drag line is so big that you have an enormous overhead crane. How many tons? That's a 30, it has a 35 ton overhead crane. 35 ton overhead crane inside of it. So put very simply, the way this thing works, there's motors up in the front there that turn the machine left and right. And then this drum with these motors lifts the bucket up and down, hoist. This drum with those motors pulls the bucket in and lets the bucket out. And then the generators in the back power the whole party. Oh yeah. You could get lost in this. Whoa. Holy smokes. It's one giant this is gear. Like one big gear to go all the way around. So one giant and gear but four, four motors. Four shafts on it with gears to make it, wow. make it swing. So that's how you swing the entire machine. A gigantic gear with four motors with smaller gears on that, swinging this thing back and forth. That's crazy. Oh. And it just rolls? This, this rolls about half the speed that you're swinging. So when I check these, we gotta check them every day. When I check them, it takes two full, two full revolutions for me to look at every roll. Because oh. it goes about half the speed that you're swinging. Holy smoke. So do you just stand here as he swings around? Yep, I'll stand here. There's a 
a remote back there with a horn button on it. I can honk him up in the cab. Then he knows I'm ready. Then he'll do three. He'll do three swings all the way around. One to look at the rack, and then two to look at the rollers. How high above the ground are we right now? Uh, that's the tub right here. So, so or maybe I don't know, six feet. Six. Oh, so six, six feet. Yeah. Six to eight feet. Yeah. So this whole thing is sitting on the tub, yep. which then sits on the ground. Yep. Yeah. I can show you. The, I can show you the tub. So you actually, there's grease that comes down. Can I get down there? Yeah, you can down there. Yeah, pretty much the entire machine is on an automatic, automatic grease cycle. Yeah. Everywhere. This is the center pin of the entire machine. It spins on that right there. This is the actual big, there's a bunch of other gears, like intermediate gears, yeah. that move this, but this is the big one. So it, it rotates. It rotates. Like Whoa. This. And all these lines are just, these, these are all just grease lines? These are all grease lines. These are the, actually the cam pins are the only thing that's not automatic. Automatic with grease. We have to come down here, we gotta manually, we gotta hook a hose to it. Right here. Oh yeah, yeah. And then pump grease to it. Every, hundred, every 100 steps, we give it two shots of grease. Is that right? Every 100 steps. If you're walking it a long distance, do you have to stop to let things cool down? Every, yeah, it depends. Every once in a while there's bearings that do heat up. Yeah. And then it takes hours. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For them to cool down. So this is what moves the entire thing. One on this side, one on the other side. One of the top questions with drag lines is how do they move? Well, they're called walking drag lines for a reason and that's because they walk. It has two feet either side. It puts the feet on the ground. It lifts itself up and it scoots itself along. It takes about 45 seconds. 45. It takes about 45 seconds for one rotation. One rotation is eight feet. So it's not the fastest machine in the world, but it does move itself all over the mine. To walk from one side of the cut to the other takes about 12 hours. This time of year especially, it's really cold and people are running their heaters nonstop to stay warm in their homes all around North Dakota and states uh, surrounding North Dakota. That's why what's happening here is so important. <clears throat> this is a coal mine feeding a power plant, producing power for tens of thousands of people all over the state and abroad. Without this machine, without this drag line, the two others, all the other machines and all the people working here, there'd be a lot of people without power without warmth, which is not an option. So this machine here, it's not just cool, it's not just big, it's absolutely essential to making this community go round. A huge thank you to North American Coal and NACO for having us out. The Freedom Mine here is one of my favorite mines. Of all the mines I go to around the world, one of my absolute favorite. Thank you for having us and letting us show off what it is that you do and your machines that do it.